Water is essential to life. Yet in St. Lucia, a Caribbean gem with breathtaking landscapes and an abundance of natural beauty, climate change is threatening its water supply. Increasing temperatures, rising sea levels, and more extreme weather events are making access to clean, safe water more difficult than ever before. All of St. Lucia's major economic sectors and water reserves depend heavily on seasonal rains. But with unpredictable and reduced rainfall, the island is facing increasing periods of drought, leading to chronic water stresses. In St. Lucia, we have really begin to feel the effects with all the heat and, and heat waves, I must say, even water shortages. Through the past decade, we have experienced a lot of water shortages on Mount Island. Um, you find that we have a lot more rationing of water to do to try to meet the needs of um, the growing population. Apart from the fact that the population is growing, the resource itself is being drained. So rivers and um, other sources that would have provided sufficient water years gone to actually meet the demands of the communities being fed from them. Right now, we cannot achieve these goals again. So we find ourselves um, having to maximize the resource we have now. Maximizing water resources in this climate crisis is taking a toll on the main water utility company of St. Lucia Wasco, forcing them to take adaptive measures such as water rationing, water conservation awareness campaigns, and other extreme coping actions. Because of, of our experiences with, with climate change and the variability that accompanies climate change, Wasco has had to be, become very dynamic, very adaptable in the way it, um, it abstracts water, in the way it delivers its service. We've had to, to, to sometimes stray away from the norm. We've had to do, um, we've had to take actions like, for example, sharing systems. We've had to take more, even more extreme water rationing and valving just to be able to at least weather through the dry period. With dry periods becoming more intense, impacts are widespread on all key sectors of St. Lucia's economy, including agriculture, manufacturing, tourism, and public services such as schools. If on a given day, when our water company Wasco was not able to supply us with water, then you find that um, during the day some of our teachers at abnormal school hours would have to go home. And this, this, um, this is because uh, we are a female dominated staff. Other climate impacts are not only related to drought conditions and with climate variability, water supply business becomes even more complicated. Lack of rainfall means less water availability. But what about when there is too much rain? You have a lot of overland flow. Overland flow, high turbidity, Wasco is unable to treat that water because the turbidity is just too high. We also have the clogging of intakes. So even during this nice rainy season that we have, we will still have issues with abstraction because we have a lot of small intakes deep into the forest areas. Whether small intakes or large reservoirs, heavy rainfall from frequent and intense storms lead to floods and sedimentation in the rivers and reservoirs. These floods can overwhelm water intakes and treatment systems and contaminate freshwater supplies, making access to clean water even harder. But there's hope. The government of St. Lucia receives grant funds from international donors like the European Union to build resilience to climate change in the water sector. Between 2023 and 2024, St. Lucia benefited from three successful investments valued at a total of 625,000 euros under the EU GCSEA Plus project, which is implemented by the five Cs. You recognize that there were critical persons within government and within community groups that were necessary to define the projects that were needed within the water sector that were particularly crucial. 
So we had multiple stakeholder consultations um, to discuss what would be considered priority areas within the water sector. We also considered the vulnerability of various communities um, in order to define exactly where the needs are. Of course, this had to be factoring in the budget of the, the project, the national project, and um, feasibility of implementation. Um, uh, for us, we know that there are areas in San Lucia that are always water stress. Whether it's raining normal or there is no rain, it's drought, it's always water stress. And one of the areas um, is the, the, the south of the island. And uh, um, institutions that were greatly affected is, at the schools. There are many, many disruptions and interruptions in the school day, daily routine, from janitorial to absenteeism and so on at school. For that school, we upgraded the storage capacity. The school now has an additional 20,000 gallons of water. And there is a stark difference compared to previously. The students are now able to not have disruptions in the classroom because of a lack of water. They have adequate storage in order to be able to continue their classes. A clean, safe and steady water supply is important for a healthier school population. With the introduction of the system at the Plainview Combined School, which serves more than 400 students, building water resilience is more than just putting in physical infrastructure. Trust me, we have seen a tremendous improvement in our sanitation. And you know, for having a reliable water supply, um, especially in an institution like a school, is so important. Keeping the place clean, having a clean environment means that you're going to have healthy students, more productive students, even happier students and staff. Improving water supply rests on the shoulders of the water utility company WASCO and the Water Resource Management Agency of St. Lucia. But building water resilience against climate change is stretching the capacity. Thankfully, we, we have very good relationships with the government. And because of that kind of relationship, we are able to partner with agencies, for example, the EU, GCCA, the five Cs, to, to implement projects that are beneficial to, to I mean, the rest of St. Lucia, for example, um, Two projects that, that, that emanated from that partnership, um, we got the, the Vana Intake project and we also have the Debara project. For the Debara project, uh, we worked very closely with WASCO on this one in order to ensure that the quality of water would be improved. Quality of water as well as the availability of water. In the past, the residents would have intermittent supply of water, and in particular, during times of heavy rainfall, which these times are increasing because of climate change, we're getting more severe storms and also more severe droughts. So in the past, the community would receive an intermittent supply of water. And now, since the implementation of the project, the, the uh, installation of a 25,000 gallon glass fused to steel tank, which is an upgrade from the previous 10,000 gallon concrete tank, which was in a state of disrepair um, and it was leaking. So uh, this was uh, remedied by the glass fused to steel tank. Uh, that in addition to the solar powered water treatment plant, that now provides the community with a steady, continuous supply of clean water up to, and it's, it's, um, the water quality is of World Health Organization standards now. Another EU-funded project WASCO is thankful for is a water intake in Vana, a farming community in the southern part of the capital of Castries. The intake serves as a critical substitute to the main water reservoir in St. Lucia the John Compton Dam, which supplies 58% of the island's population. Recently, the project in the Vana area, which was a project aimed at improving an intake at Vana and a pump station pumping water from that tributary, 
to help improve our total water production on island. To partnership with us, together with the region, together with the countries, to just uh, look for the first solutions to get a more affordable water, but also a better and resilient uh, Caribbean. Water is life, and in this era of climate change, every drop counts. Together, the Five Seas and its partners are building St. Lucia's water resources and ensuring a sustainable future for generations to come.